This is the second half of steps eight of our 14 steps found in The Art of Storytelling. In this one, we deal with the issue of where in the story do we start? It's true that most stories start at the beginning. But on some occasions, that's not really the best place to do it. You want to find a place that draws your audience quickly into the story. So watch our six storytellers deal with this issue. They will try starting in the middle, at the end. I think most of them finally settle on the fact that it should start at the beginning, but still a very important step as you deal with the issue where to start the story. At the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. The mother crab said to her son, Oh, son of mine, son of mine, watch me. I'll show you just how to walk straight forward with your toes pointed out. The mother crab tried and tried and tried, but she couldn't walk in a straight line, not forwards anyway. She could only walk sideways, just like her son. She had said to him, Now, oh, son of mine, son of mine, why do you walk sideways like that? You should always walk straight forward with your toes pointed out. A mother crab pointed her toes outward and fell flat on her face. But why was she pointing her toes outward? Crabs don't point their toes out. Crabs don't walk in a straight line. They, they walk sideways. But this mother crab, somehow she'd gotten it into her head that she should walk forwards. And so should her son. She had said to him, Oh, son of mine, son of mine, why do you walk sideways like that? You should always walk forwards with your toes pointed out. The young mouse was excited about the idea that he actually thought of an idea. He actually thought of an idea. Now, he was in a meeting that he wasn't really supposed to say anything. He was just privileged to even be here. He was supposed to be quiet, but he had an idea that he could give. Uh, you, you see, they had all got together to talk about the problem, the problem being the cat. The old mouse, years of wisdom, he had fought his battles, he had his scrapes, but now he stood up to speak to the crowd. The young mouse had his say. Now it was time for wisdom to speak up. You see, the council had met together to discuss the problem of the cat. Um, well, it's a short story. Kind of the middle part of it is that bull grazing. So maybe I would start with that. With, um, the bull's been out there just grazing in that beautiful, lush, green pasture. Every once in a while he looks up and makes sure his cows are staying in line over there. That's his domain. He kind of wanders from place to place just enjoying the, the wonderful weather. And unbeknownst to him, suddenly in his face is a gnat. <laughs> the bull's wondering. Funniest thing I saw, this bull out there shaking his head, turning around, whisking his tail. And when he did, this gnat just kind of got knocked through the air. And I thought, how could such a tiny little gnat be such a trouble for this big, massive bull? Well, I learned the story just by watching because that gnat, he was a persistent fellow. He came back one more time. He had been resting on the tip of that bull. 
After he had rested a while, he got right in that bull's face. Now, if it were to start in the middle of the story, it would sound like this. Once there was a dog, and he was so happy because he had just been in the town and got a great big old juicy soup bone. His tail was wagging as he started across the bridge. Oh, he was so happy that that butcher was able to come up and give him something that was so needed and so wonderful. He was just being thankful to that butcher when, when he looked down into the river. But if I started at the end, it might sound like this. <laughs> I can't believe it. I finally get myself some decent food and what happens? Oh, I should have known. Oh, but that butcher, that butcher had been so nice to give me this soup bone, this big juicy soup bone, and what did I do? I go running out of the town so nobody else, none of those other dogs would have even a sniff of it. I get over to this bridge. As the, pastor, as the man came home from the market, he, he could hear the moaning and the groaning and he looked out and there under the oak tree sat the miser, pulling his hair and crying, my gold, my gold. Well, it only enticed the passerby to find out what was the problem. So he went up to the miser and asked him, What is the matter? And the miser told him, Someone has stolen my gold. And with that, the passerby asked more. The miser told him that he had been hiding his gold, and every day he went out and counted it. And someone had come in the night and stolen it. Now, if you would start the story in the end, you would talk about the stone, I think. The stone would lay in the hole pushed in there by the passerby. Now, why would you push a stone in a hole? For that hole at one time had held a tin box of gold. If I wanted to start this story in the middle, I think I would start with the sons working in the fields, maybe going out either the first day or one of the early days that they went out. Mark and Michael went out to the field and they saw the little markers they had placed where they had left off yesterday and they picked up their digging from there and their plowing. And they kept careful track of the back and forth that they accomplished and how deep they were digging. They were not just plowing their field. They were looking for a treasure. This is the treasure that their father had promised them. Their father had told them on his deathbed that he had buried a treasure that they should seek, buried somewhere on their land. <laughs> Martha, you would not believe how much money I got for the crops today, more than ever. Now this was not so surprising because Michael had been working harder than he ever had. He had been digging up and down every acre of the land that they owned and he had worked and tilled the land harder than he ever had. And therefore he got this great crop. Well what had prompted this spark of industry in Michael? The words of his father so long ago.